Richard, I haven't experienced a charity shield quite like this one and the noise that's being generated here predominantly by Newcastle fans but Manchester United not far behind let's give you the team news all Manchester United's newcomers waiting in the wings today at Wembley as Alex Ferguson rewards those who reaped such a rich harvest for the club last season 10 of the 11 who started the FA Cup final so England's Gary Neville incidentally staying amongst the substitutes the one alteration Paul Scholes who was chopped and changed with Andy Cole in the closing games he has the chance for an extended run now due to Cole's bout of pneumonia. Well, even without Gary Neville, Cole, Cruyff and Tavoski, Mark, this is still a very formidable looking side. New season, but nothing new to tell you about Manchester United. I think at the back they'll be conscious not to leave gaps down here for Ferdinand and Shearer to run into. Ahead of that, don't be surprised to see Scholes drop off the front and Cantona take his place there. There won't be one out and out striker, so that maybe gives something for the back four of Newcastle to think about. For Newcastle, Pavel Cernicek has just edged ahead of Shaka Hislop in goal. A back four without Steve Howey today, who's not quite 100%, although he is named amongst the substitutes. Three in midfield, Rob Lee and Peter Beersley either side of David Batty, with David Ginola starting perhaps on the left, but with plenty of licence to roam from that position. And up front, as Kevin Keegan said to me, light the blue touch paper. Yeah, this is an exciting looking side. Apart from David Batty, you can see Lee getting forward, you can see Beersley getting forward. As you've said, watch Ginola come even away over to this side of the pitch to try and interfere. But just watch this side here. I would be a little concerned that Giggs and Philip Neville getting two on one against Steve Watson. So it may be that Robert Lee's job when they lose the ball on that side is to go over and help him. Alan Shearer played in the Charity Shield last year. It was a low-key affair against Everton for Blackburn, who were beaten 1-0. Nothing low-key today. Paul Durkin appeared in Euro 96 at Newcastle, where he came on as a substitute referee in the France-Bulgaria match for Dermot Gallagher, who incidentally is still injured and will miss the opening weeks of the season. Newcastle have somehow upstaged the double double winners Shearer and Ferdinand get the game underway that's Ferdinand who's not feeling a hundred percent but certainly not wanting to miss out on this uh, usually showpiece occasion but there's more meat to it today I would suggest the best two teams in the country might be some arguments from uh, Liverpool and Aston Villa perhaps about that well they are the best two, it's simple as that they finished first and second, I don't think anyone can argue with that now. they've gone on to strengthen squads but I, I like you have never known the beginning of a, a charity shield like this the noise, the anticipation, the atmosphere Batty to find Keane, the flag is up against Paul Scholes, oh that was tight, very tight, a lovely skill from Cantona in the first place to shake off Batty, and as we would expect he picks him out, tight, tight decision. We must now refer to the men on the uh, sidelines as the referee's assistants, we've got Dave Pollock Sheffield today. The throw taken by Irwin. He's at right back, Phil Neville on the left. His goals. Wembley had what, six weeks to recover since the final of the European Championship. Here's Rob Lee. Trying to slide it through to Shearer. Okay, Shearer made a lovely little diagonal run and Rob Lee chose the, the wrong option really. It's a great ball from Beckham. Mickey Butts uh, flexing an injury and has not been involved in the play for the last 30 seconds or so but it didn't stop Manchester United pressing on. 
great ball from Beckham. The only surprise for me was that Eric Cantona played it in a little early. I thought he would have just held it, held it, and given the chasing pack a little bit of time to catch up play. But this is a really bright opening to this match. Juno. Put down by Pallister. Whose fitness generally has been a matter of question, Andy. And uh, as we all know, he missed Euro 96 and has missed some of the pre season. I think, take it from me, he's fit, Martin. Alex Ferguson wouldn't have risked him today, with next week being the most important date, I think, in United's calendar. He would have rather, if any doubts at all about Gary, have left him out today, getting him ready for the opening day next week. And Manchester United are at Wimbledon. We've seen Joe Kinnear here. His spine mission already. Newcastle started Everton. But, uh, they've suffered quite a lot from uh, Les Ferdinand in particular in recent seasons. Now he's back by Steve Watson. He continues to be preferred to Warren Barton at right back. But a little bit different from what we put on screen, Newcastle, Mark, in respect that Rob Lee's what I would call left side of Batty and Peter Beersley's the one who's the right side so perhaps it'll be Peter's job and it will be if he's there to just keep an eye on the gigs Philip Neville partnership that side Ferdinand couldn't get away Pallister saw to that that's a great piece of defending from Gary Pallister he knows that that kind of area if Les Ferdinand gets control of it and gets turned then he's an awesome prospect to be facing Palace have timed the tackle beautiful. Of course, these days players' shirt numbers have become status symbols as well as means of identification. And so the uh, pass over who would wear nine, and we know that Alan Shearer has claimed that. And there's no doubt if Newcastle fans had the pick of any player in the world to come to St James's Park in the summer, Shearer would have been top of that list. Their dreams have come true, and uh, Shearer's dreams as well, for all the overtures from Old Trafford. And for all the disappointment at Ewood Park. But they can't say that uh, there was any shortchanging from Shearer in the time he spent at Blackburn. losing his footing, that left butt in, there was a ball on to the left, but went to the right to Cantona, Giggs is still waiting on the left, but involved for Manchester United in the pre-season matches because of injuries, perhaps they've forgotten he's around today. Well, he definitely did, yeah, that was a great opportunity for Mickey, but just to go it to Ryan Giggs, who could really have been attacking Steve Watson right on the edge of the box, one against one. Looks for a bit of rustiness as he tried to lay it infield, it was cut out by Beardsley, Jimela. Beresford for company on the left. And he's picked out by Lee. Sheila and Ferdinand in the centre. So we've got to get used to saying those two names together. Never quite worked out for England, apart from that match against Portugal. It's often Ferdinand in place of Shearer, particularly when Alan Shearer had that cruciate knee ligament problem. So they're in tandem for their club, will they be in tandem for their country? Ben Hoddle is here to make an assessment, John Gorman alongside him. It's an option. Not a bad one you have, isn't it? <laughs> it's authority on the FA Cup final. Liverpool really didn't match him in midfield here in May. Cantona is onside. But quickly up his line was uh, Sernicek. Good work from Shearer. Peter Beardsley, who like Alan Shearer, had to uh, Learn his trade away from his hometown initially. 
Ginola. He likes to hit them with the right foot. Optimistic range that time. Flip forward by Scholes was usefully delivered. And this is Keane. Only got Cantona, although others were arriving. That was unlucky. Just lack of numbers, really, but what a ball and what a run. Great ball from Scholes, wonderful run, and then great ability from Roy Keane to skip past Philippe Albert. Shearer. Ferdinand. Shearer's got his foot to it, and uh, David May would have been annoyed about that. Yeah, well, Alex too high. Alex Ferguson would have been annoyed. The one thing you know about Alan Shearer, Mark, you don't allow him to do this. That's come in from the left side onto his right foot. Plays a 1-2 here, but he's destroyed many teams by doing that and coming in and getting a shot in. And he's Schmeichel well out of his line. Oh, that could have been an embarrassing moment. A little 1-2 with his new strike partner. Just sits up here. Manages to get the toe to under pressure. But can't get it down quick enough. not yet had 10 minutes but it certainly whets your appetite for the months ahead oh. this time Cantona who uh, worked that position well uh, or two ago without being offside was caught too far forward he certainly started way up the pitch here at Cantona in the opening 10 minutes he's played as a, a partner really to Paul Scholes Beardsley should uh, remind you that Fastino Aspria is suspended from the match at Everton after that affair with Keith Curl at Manchester City last season, which didn't do his chances much good at playing in this game, or certainly starting the game. But it will be particularly fascinating to see how Kevin Keegan blends this almost embarrassment of attacking riches in the Newcastle United squad. What a ball. This is Giggs. Manchester United had four players uh, chasing into the centre. That's a missed kick by Beardsley, and uh, it was a good job for him that Darren Peacock was alert. He'll just flick it back to Cernicek. Ferdinand has turned, mate. Shearer's up with him. And Pallister coming across. Good enough. Just showed Pallister too much, Martin. He picked up the flight of the ball brilliantly and really early, and that's why he lost David May. He spots you're not going to get it, and he's away, he spins in behind, but that first touch there, well, it tempts Gary Pallister, who was never going to miss the tackle, I don't think. So, Newcastle have the corner, to be taken by Ginola, towards Albert, who gets to it. Comes back to Albert again, with a tentative touch by Cantona. An early ball on for Beresford, but he spurned the chance to play it, and Ginola wasn't best pleased. Lee. Beresford and Ginola are still having a little conversation about it. Watson now kicks out Newcastle's Frenchman. Nicky <laughs> Butt doesn't flinch in that type of contest. Nothing charitable about that challenge, was there? Oh, fiercely committed. The only thing I wouldn't have liked to have been there was the ball. And to Beresford's credit, he's uh, got a stitch in a toe injury that he picked up at Lincoln on Friday. He didn't flinch. Pallister. Beckham who likes to uh, involve himself in field and has the ability to play in that position. He's gone forward now alongside Giggs and it was Beckham who very nearly reached it. 
Well, I remember Philip Neville picking out, Roy, was it Roy Keane, Martin Old Trafford with a very similar type of ball. Against Newcastle. Yeah, and he made them pay the price, smashed it in. And there is Kane. be easy to say that there's more at stake for Newcastle today, the revenge motive, there's uh, two league defeats, one pretty comprehensive at Old Trafford, the other at St James's Park, distinctly less so, but uh, vital factors in uh, the way the Premiership was won, Keane, let's send up for him, now they started the better side, Manchester United, they've looked brighter, they've looked the more threatening side, Lovely little flick from Cantona again, and it sets up beautifully for Roy Keane. The only thing he'll be disappointed, it was his left foot rather than his right was striking it with. But Alex will be happy with the, the start his team have made in this opening 15 minutes. What a record he's got, oh. undoubtedly the uh, smartest Alex in football. <laughs> Steve Watson, Dick's played a part in that. Be collected by Scholes. Cantona. Similarity in Scholes has played to Cantona. I'm sure he won't mind me making that comparison. But he likes to drop off and play the passes from the deeper position. This is Shearer. As if you need to be told. And Newcastle have a corner. certainly than he expected and he went to placement when he might have expected power well they've put Beckham on Albert now for two corners Martin and I think Albert will be quite happy if that continues but there's an awfully big gap you can see what Lenny has tried to do he's tried to bend it in the far corner just didn't get it started wide enough for the goal to trouble Schmeichel any stage fairly comfortable with the shape of uh, their team pattern and, uh, now there is Butch for bringing down Philip Neville he's only beaten by just ability and pace of the movement that's the thing that embarrassed Philippe Albert there totally committed himself to the tackle Albert minus the moustache this season players will do all sorts of things to get lighter on the scales when they report back I just lost more and more hair every year <laughs> <laughs> so Manchester United have a free kick Beckham and Giggs bring over it, it's Giggs who takes it, aiming for the head of Cantona, finding the head of Cantona, so now the optimistic shouts from the United, Manchester United fans for handball by Ferdinand, he kept his arms firmly down by his side, a little bit concerned Newcastle about the times that Manchester United are picking out Giggs, what hasn't happened really has been the end product from the left side for the champions as yet, the champions and the FA Cup holders. Beckham. Sonicek was in the Czech Republic's squad for Euro 96, so without playing, he got a runners up medal in the tournament. And close actually to being involved in the very final itself when Koba, uh, the first choice, needed a fitness test or being uh, passed to play.
pitch in that final, of course, was Karol Poborski. He made his reputation around the continent and certainly in England by his performances in this country. Since when he's left Slavia Prague, the Czech champions for the English champions. Watson's throw, led by Phil Neville. And now Ginola. Newcastle trying to pick up the tempo. So we were led to believe that Daddy Ginola would wander a little bit in this from this left side, but he's kept himself pretty much rooted to this left side. And up till now he's found it difficult to create any sort of opening when he's had possession. He's just drifted, what, uh, 20 yards infield a few times without really crossing if he drew a line from uh, the centre of one goal to the other. That's an option I think we'll use this season, Mark. That diagonal ball from either left or right to Ferdinand Ashira. Both are extremely good in the air. I think once they get used to it, they'll use that diagonal ball for the fast striker just to knock down for the other one to be running onto. This is Beckham. Owen is trying to get that. Started from very deep. Up behind Beardsley. And uh, it's an important intervention there by Peacock with Cantona waiting by the far post. Once again, it's the, Ma the Manchester United that are looking the most threatening. Scholes. I wonder whether back and call for him to let it run coming on to it <laughs> certainly Mike Ferguson using David Beckham in a wide position today has got Poborski who could play there has got uh, Jordi Kreif who can play there from uh, Newcastle in terms of new signings have all been in monetary terms for Manchester United they've been in terms of uh, the numbers of players who've come to the club although of course Lee Sharp left the ranks yesterday to go to Leeds four million pounds program saying that Newcastle were going to treat today as their first league game which isn't usually the way for clubs coming into the charity shield it's often regarded by the participating managers as the final pre-season fine-tuning affair tends to grow in importance for the winners though that might be Manchester United looking to get into a winning position here but it wouldn't quite drop for Scholes great run from Scholes Mark they pulled Peacock forward and then just ducked in behind them and it was a great quality ball he'd be disappointed he didn't get hold of it on the first bounce and once he didn't then Sundercheck was always going to be favourite Junala let's play with that ball towards the Newcastle right is gone for an infringement by Ryan Giggs just halfway through the first half no nil so far in the Littlewoods FA Charity Shield this is Lee Ginola from Beardsley, Newcastle well represented in the centre. Peacock. And the centre back Albert was there as well to make the first header. Beardsley. 
more sustained pressure from Newcastle at the moment. Batty, all being played in front of Manchester United though. Ginola. A bit of hesitation by Watson who had to cover in the centre. We talked about the two central defenders being upfield. And Cantona's got a gap to go through. Well stopped, Cernicek comes back to Cantona again. He's got a second chance and he doesn't take that one either. Now full marks to the goalkeeper for chance one. But Eric will be disappointed with himself for chance two. But this was a beautiful break from Manchester United. How often have we said that they're more dangerous when they're defending? The ball's a beautiful one because it's not an easy ball. It was perfectly timed from Giggs. So was the run in the first touch. But the goalkeeper made life difficult for him. But the, when it came off the goalkeeper here, he stood big for a long time, the goalkeeper. And when this comes back to Eric Cantona, he's got time to pick his spot, to hit the target. And he doesn't do what he wanted to have done. 19 goals in 38 appearances for Manchester United last season. And uh, this has been pointed out. Just one yellow card in those games. The only blot on his disciplinary record, which is under total scrutiny. And he came back from that one suspension. Pavel Cernicek, who's really competing with Shaka Hislop to start the season in Newcastle's goal, has made a good start to this game. Beckham gets away from Albert. Scholes is with him. Cantona is free. It's another chance for Cantona. And this time he's taken it. You can't keep losing him as Newcastle have been doing without paying the price. Everyone might be looking at David Beckham and saying great vision. But he's got a lot to thank Paul Scholes for Martin. As he's got watch, he didn't see it quite there. Scholes actually points to Beckham to go the other way. Because he saw Cantona in the better position. Just here he's pointing to Beckham. Beckham suddenly sees he's there. And this is danger, Belzer. He's missed the first one. I never expected him to miss that one. I don't think anyone in the ground expected him to miss again. Watch how cool he is. Sunacek comes out, steadies himself. But there's a little gap there. And Eric finds it. It's a beautiful goal. And it's been threatening since, well, since minute five, I would say. Since the opening five minutes, they've looked the more dangerous side. They've looked to have the greater threat. And it's no surprise that they've opened their account. Well, for all that Manchester United achieved last season, and Cantona in particular, they scarcely merited a mention in the build-up to this game. We're talking about Cantona now. The goal after 24 minutes. Cries of Shearer coming home. Cantona always seems to be at home at Wembley. And there's another goal on this splendid stage for him. But back come Newcastle with Batty. Too high for Shearer, but he'll turn it back here for Junela. Corner of Neville. for the 15 million pound man free header just didn't get enough on it fire it and just checks behind David May maybe just stretching a little bit too much excellent movement from Shearer took May ahead then just stopped in behind him Eric Cantona's 
a record, of course, in terms of goals, a hat-trick in a charity shield for Leeds United. Four years ago. He was also the scorer the last time Manchester United did play in this fixture in 1994, and they beat Blackburn 2-0, and he's chasing in again. Cernicek is, I would think, feeling the pinch about lack of cover. Michael, but it went straight to Beckham. Giggs. Now but Beckham's tapped on field again, and so too is Giggs. And they explore the central route. This time Newcastle do close the door. When Whip is wanted, Neville is available. Keane. Giggs. And uh, both it was alongside Cantona. Pallister. They dominate in possession, Mark Manchester United. They look so confident. Almost an arrogance about their play this afternoon. The pass has been slick. It's been accurate for the vast majority of this opening half hour. And there's another one for Cantona. And uh, he came in between Albert and Beresford. He looked at the referee. We looked at the referee. Well, I'm not sure which part of Philippe Albert's anatomy the ball strikes. Again, it's a glorious raking pass. And as it comes down, Cantona gets the shot there. Ah, oh, it's a good tackle. I think Eric's concerned about the challenge. But it was a great tackle from Albert. Diggs, Cantona pulling away from Albert again. And not uh, coping with the quality of his work off the ball, let alone what he does when he's in possession. And here's another one. Beckham's cross. And Nicky Butt flying in with the header. Well, if this is only a cotton razor mark for the rest of this season, what have we got to look forward to? That is a magnificent goal. Again, we talked about the passing. Wonderful pass, cross field for Cantona's run. Now watch this for a drilled cross. He absolutely drills it. And Butts got forward time after time this afternoon. And he's rewarded. Look at the way he looks up. Drills at him. Go on, Nicky, put your head on that. And he gives Sundacek no chance. Goalkeepers don't save these. There's too much pace on them. You can't save them. Not unless they hit you. And I think the scoreline is about right. I think they've looked two goals ahead of Newcastle this afternoon. Well, it is very, very early days. We should not forget that. But if Manchester United want to just send a message to Alan Shearer... along the lines of, are you sure you made the right decision? You could have come to us. But as I say, early days. Yeah, but Today, as Ferguson said earlier, Mark, you don't win FA Cups, you don't win League Championships on Charity Shield Day. You do win a nice trophy and you do score marks. And if I've always said, if you're coming to Wembley to play, you come to Wembley to win. Beckham is there. Skulls there. Really bright as buttons at the moment for Manchester United players individually, and it's all panning out collectively as well. Cantona to Skulls and Newcastle were creaking again at the back. Oh, they're all over the place now. I think the back four are a little bit concerned with it. I think the three they're playing in field, they're not quite sure what's happening. Keane and Butt. Giggs and Beckham in particular are absolutely running the show. Ferdinand leaves but Shearer's offside. Ferdinand could, uh, was in a position to run it in, but the uh, flag went up. Now that is a threat. That's what they're looking for. It's a tight one. There's no doubt about that. He's not, not offside. offside. 
But what good covering from Dennis Irwin. I'm not so sure that... Well, I don't know whether Les thought he had an open goal. Did he see the flag? I don't know. But certainly Dennis Irwin didn't give it up. Well, Kevin Keegan, as a player, had a great pain at the uh, charity shield. He was sent off here playing for Liverpool back in 1974. But I just wonder whether the feelings at the moment are a bit comparable. This side certainly second best, although between Ferdinand and Shearer suggested there will be some light at the end of the tunnel Newcastle's free kick goals from Cantona and from Butt from Manchester United Beckham. Key. Scholes coming in from the left, leaving some room for Giggs. He wants to take on Watson. It's a corner. Well, if he'd have held it up, Philip Neville was trying his best to get round the outside. The back four are having to work the socks off, Martin, and that's because. I think the three in the midfield area that Newcastle have and, and David Ginnell are having real problems in stemming the flow. Back fours need protection at times and they're not getting it at the moment. They've been really exposed. Just one uh, comment. Uh of consolation to Newcastle. They did play on Friday night, most of these players. It was a commitment to Lincoln, that, typical of Newcastle, that they promised before they realised they were going to be involved in the charity shield. And they were as good as their word. It was a wonderful night at Central Bank, but it was hard work as well. And it wasn't that long ago. And uh, you have to say, in terms of time for recovery at this stage of uh, the uh, pre-season, the ideal for placing Manchester United in for Manchester United at Wembley. They've been chasing shadows at times in this first half. I think that's been the quality of Manchester United's football. And it's a message to the rest of the Premiership if they're wondering whether the champions are ready as they start out in the campaign to retain the title. And the evidence of the opening 35 minutes, they're more than ready. And don't forget, we haven't seen Kabuski, Coyle, Cole or Gary Neto yet. All the noise, yeah. Solskjaer, who has been very impressive in the short time he spent at uh, Manchester United in training. He got it to Giggs again. Antona goes a second time. He got with a hefty sigh of relief, knocks it away. Still, there's a conundrum with Newcastle as to whether they might start the season with three centre backs. As we said at the beginning, Steve Howey not really wanting to be risked today. A number of those uh, injury difficulties he had through the summer when he was in and out of the uh, England Euro 96 squad. Stretched in. I have to say, this is a joy to watch Manchester United's football. 
Roy's keen run from midfield there to give Giggs an option is ah, it's just wonderful. Cantona, who's played as far forward as I can remember for 40 minutes of this match, hardly dropped off the pace at all. But wanted to be right up there at the front. Giggs, the back of Peter Schmeichel is about 40 yards from goal, wanting to join in as well. They can't keep it at the moment, can they, Newcastle, Mark? They're, they're no sooner have the ball than they either give it back to United, as Steve Watson's just done there, or United win, or Manchester United win it back. It's certainly a difference in the passing and movement of the sides. between him and Ginola. The best of friends. Well, I'm not so sure of that decision, I have to say. That ball travelled an awful long way. And they play this lovely diagonal ball. Very, very close. This is Beresford. David May, of course, knows a thing or two about Shearer's game. They were at Blackburn together. Lee. Ginola. Now, and they try and display some interpassing in midfield. There's not the zip, there's not the craft. It's too tight, man. Too many passes in about a little ten-yard square there. Tuesday against Inter at Old Trafford. You'll see highlights here on Sky Sports at 10.30 on Tuesday night. Schmeichel's away with Denmark. And we've got an international on Wednesday against Sweden. Unlike England, they've got a game to warm up for their first World Cup. Qualifier luxury denied to Glenn Hoddle. And then the England start on September the 1st away to Moldova. Not an easy fixture. How anyone in the national <laughs> Through Batty's competitive streak, something of course that Keane has in abundance, and uh, he's talked his way into trouble here. He's been booked. Newcastle got the free kick, and Les Ferdinand should get a goal back and hasn't. The sheer size of Schmeichel denying him. Well, how many times did he do that last season, Mark? When you think there's a goal in the offing and up pops Michael, great ball and May misjudges it totally. Ferdinand can't hit that any better. He hits it right, close to the goalkeeper, but he's still got to make the save. Well, that really would have been a lift for Newcastle after a harrowing 40 minutes or so. Well, you can't ask for better when he hits it. it. It certainly was on the way up when he made contact and it continued to rise. But he hit it very powerfully from no more than 12 yards. And Schmeichel once again. Yeah. What a goalkeeper. Well, it's a Manchester United debut for Carol Poborski. He's come on for Nicky Butt. He's got a problem with his vision, I think. We're getting news to that effect from the far side. But the scorer of Manchester United's second goal. So here's Beckham looking for a third. Well, it won't affect the system of the way they play. Poborski will just come right side and Beckham just tuck in field to where Buck was playing alongside Keane. So there'll be no problems here. It gives us a chance to look at that opening goal from Eric Cantona. I often talk about players who 
Well, they, they, they play a part without, look at him point, plays a part here without touching the ball. He could see where Cantona was, Beckham couldn't. So he told his mate where to pass it to, the Frenchman did the rest. Yes, and Cantona passed it into the net. <laughs> Beersley. back at Wembley. Six weeks after playing in the final of Euro 96. What a change and upswing in his footballing life. His club, Slavia Prague, won the Czech Championship. That hadn't happened for almost 50 years, so he had all those celebrations, a fantastic international tournament, and then a move to Manchester United. He's got a bit of learning to do about life in the English game. If we can call it the English game anymore with so many uh, foreigners coming to grace it. And it's Danny Ginola. To uh, sweep this up. Oh, and uh, Beresford was a little fortunate. To, I think he was being hounded by Beckham. But they uh, are always passing it under pressure, Newcastle. And they haven't been able to apply the same sort of pressure to the marvellous movement from Alec Ferguson's team in midfield. division and the winners of the then Southern League Newcastle beat Northampton things have changed a little since then Lee Ratty Ginola straying into the centre this time and he's found Ferdinand out comes Schmeichel Ferdinand gets the ball past him but not with true conviction left side that's the difference for me when they get down that inside left channel the weaker side not as convincing Becker Mogorski he was caught by Beresford but it, the whistle is also for half time well I wonder what Steve Bruce ex-Manchester United now has thought of the display from his former colleagues the scoreline says so much it's been very hard work for Alan Shearer and for Newcastle goals from Cantona and from Butt 2-0 to Manchester United at half-time at Wembley another indication of the depth of the talent at Alex Ferguson's disposal is that England's right back Gary Neville comes on as a second half substitute for Manchester United their second change they're allowed three from seven named substitutes today and Andy Gray and I were just thinking at half time that two years ago Manchester United won the charity shield 2-0 against Blackburn Rovers and Blackburn Rovers won the championship nine months later 2-0 to Manchester United here and if Newcastle don't uh, tidy up their act is not just at the back really because those defenders have been exposed by uh, waves and waves of midfield players moving on in United Red but it could be more embarrassment for Kevin Keegan and the travelling Toon Army Steve Watson knocks it out for the throw under some pressure from Giggs Keane Cantona 
And again, here's Poborski. David Beckham, who will appreciate and would feel the chance to play centre midfield here at Wembley. Poborski outside him on the right hand side. Here's Here's the in the centre for Newcastle. Shearer. For Batty. Trying to get it back to Shearer, who was in a good position had the pass been completed. Maybe Batty finished last season so well, it tends to be forgotten because Newcastle ended up empty handed. It was through no fault of Batty. He's on the ball again here. Beardsley getting closer and closer Cantona Beckham's gone ahead of him Keane jogging up in support his skull's on the left this time and gigs through the middle and I think if that had been in a premiership game Ryan Giggs would have given it a chase Still got a bit of catching up to do fitness-wise after a leg muscle problem in the first few days back in training. And as to that, alongside Shearer, Beardsley. Nice to in quickly again. put on this uh, occasion whatever levels of seriousness you give it there's no doubt that Newcastle went in with their pride very wounded at half time and has the opportunity to try and show what they're made of Ferdinand Gary Neville quickly in tune with the pace of proceedings to stop Rob Lee rounding it off that's a decent ball and it causes problems. Les just looks to nick it off. Rob Lee way ahead for the first time in the match really had we've seen Rob Lee in there. That's a corner. Well that was a chance. A three header chance. for Albert. That's a glorious chance. That's as good a chance as I've had. Nothing in the way, clear sight of the ball. No more than what, about 12 yards out. That's just a poor header. End of story. Well, we've got some news from Nick Collins over on the far side, Nick. Martin, Dennis Irwin was substituted at half-time because he's got a sore knee, that's why Gary Neville came on. And just to uh, update you on Nicky Butt in a moment. Because this is Paborski. Carry on, Nick. Yeah, Nicky Butt suffering from a concussion, apparently went up for a, a corner, went to head the ball and caught it full in the face in, instead of on his forehead, so he's suffering a bit from concussion. Giggs will take the corner. There's Alistair, who was watched more closely by Newcastle than Albert had been by Manchester United a little too earlier. Giggs winning it back for Phil Neville. And of course, of Manchester United and England, having played in that international in China, backs up. I don't know about you, Andy, but I find it the hardest part of the job spotting these offsides now because the movement is so good, so thoughtful from forward players. They don't envy the linesmen, and it's no surprise that occasionally they get it wrong. I think it's the hardest job in football. Not a doubt about that. But what the heck we've tried to do is to give him the option to let it go if it's tight. 
and I don't think that uh, the linesmen at the moment are prepared to do that an awful lot of them pull up decisions that are borderline and, and not offside but uh, play they, safe they think there's someone else as well Shearer so it was given away by Poborski for Manchester United Batty good climb by May Poborski trying to make up for his mistake there's no doubt Newcastle have up the tempo particularly when they haven't got the ball mark I know it's charity shield day and perhaps if winning it is not the ultimate but I can't believe Kevin Keegan would have been happy at half time I'm sure he would have had something to say to his players he knows how many supporters have travelled from the North East down to this match today and he wouldn't have been happy with what he saw from his side first half even though it is only charity shield and I think it's noticeable they've, up, they've tried to up the tempo of their game all over the pitch well, about being happy at half time he's certainly not happy now <laughs> but what Newcastle have got going for them in the second half is this horseshoe around Wembley at this end of the ground that they're attacking all black and white Ferdinand it's pretty intense in red and white in the other half we shouldn't forget that although it's not quite sellout for Manchester United but when you think there were only 40,000 here a year ago when Everton played Blackburn or oh, what was a low-key affair Watson that is played in charity shields for Leeds for Blackburn and now for Newcastle Watson might have had a swing with the left foot as the ball dropped crosses with his right Shearer climbs and well it fell between the two stools really between going in or going for the gap to Schmeichel's right or dropping for Ferdinand but that's the first time they've done something different Martin Steve Watson from the right back area decided to go forward get involved in the attack and it gave Manchester United something different to cope with it's not an easy header for Shearer gets up a little at least almost on the way down when he meets the ball he's never an easy header though Arms done by Cantona but it wide by Scholes kept in by Poborski to Manchester United corner and that's your problem isn't it we've talked about it season after season this Manchester United side we're looking at an attack from Newcastle United and what five seconds later they're defending desperately in their own half that's how quickly this team break how they can punish it Beckham's corner that's always been part of Alan Shearer's sense of responsibility I wouldn't have everyone back if I was Newcastle I've got every single player in the 18 yard box I'd stick somebody up front you three out the box Manchester United at last night David Ginola has decided I'll go up I think that makes sense they've got an option then if they clear it drops for Beckham and Manchester United might have had uh, a fair amount of optimism there there are certain players you'd like those to drop to and some you wouldn't fancy but Beckham would come in the former category oh you better believe it a little bit anxious I think he his eyes opened a little bit wide there as that was dropping. I think he quite fancied it himself. Just rushed that attack. That's done by Ferdinand. As Newcastle get a greater share of the ball, and there are signs they are doing that. Although uh, Poborski threatens them at the moment. Diggs, good tackle by Batty. is Poborski trying to make an early mark in Manchester United red he's used in a variety of roles by the Czech Republic in Euro 96 Cantona didn't play of course amazingly France didn't choose him or Ginola
Shearer, Batty. Ferdinand. I was going to say, Andy, as Newcastle get more of the ball, maybe you'll be in a better position to judge what you see from Shearer and Ferdinand in tandem. It would be very unfair to judge them on the first 45 minutes. Yeah, strikers can only do what they... What Driver, what kind of service they get? They've got scant little in the first half. I think that would be fair. Quite simply because Manchester United absolutely dominated possession of the football. And that's the first job for Newcastle is to, to get possession of the ball, to stop the other side playing, and then to play a little bit yourself. But they've got a little bit tighter in that midfield area. And there's no doubt that Kevin's had a word about it. Cantona. Do you sense without real uh, looking what was in support of Phil Neville that time? Unusually for him. Lee. Beasley pushing on down the right hand side. Finding a little bit of space and Ginola finding him with the ball. Shearer fighting to get in front there. Claiming a corner. Getting a corner. For the first time, a little bit of uh, anger from Schmeichel. Well, a game wouldn't be a game if it wasn't a little bit of anger from Peter. Ginola takes the corner. That's Lee! Good shot, and matched by the save. It's a very difficult ball to hit as it dropped. Rob Lee manufactured the effort on target so well, and he comes back again. It was another fine try. Two great efforts from Lee. First one with his left foot was absolutely beautifully struck. And I think Peter Schmeichel was happy that this came right at him. Schmeichel shuffles across his line. You see it there, there he goes. Gets a good look at it and clutches it quite beautifully. The other one, he was concerned, I think, because Lee was able to advance. You could see him not under a great deal of pressure. And he's looking to curl this one in the top corner. Just a little bit high. Well, this is a little bit more like it from Newcastle United. Ginola. And two of his teammates, I don't think quite sure what he was going to do there. Batty. Nicely played for Ginola. This is Lee again. Albert. Striding on. Shearer almost through. The problem for Newcastle is they force the pace to make sure they're not clinically picked off on the break. But they have got to do all they can to try and take some of the cockiness, if you like, out of Manchester United. They deserve to be very, very confident after the way they have conducted the majority of this match, the double winners of last season. We're hearing Newcastle voices in the crowd predominantly. But here comes the counter-attack with Giggs, with Cantona. And now with Roy Keane. It's uh, Watson who stuck out a leg. Now this game's going to flow now, Mark. Newcastle have picked up the team. They've got to go and try and get themselves a goal. And with United so quick to counter. I just think the second half will flow from end to end. Harry Neville who intercepted well and there was a sharp triangle there, Skogel from Toborski involved. And now it's Cantona, slowing it down. Phil Neville, Giggs and the Watson who attacked the man on the ball and no one helped him out by going with Giggs. This is Toborski. Surprisingly, that was his first and only goal for the Czech Republic. 
Yeah, it wasn't a bad way to open your account at an international level, I suppose. hasn't had the chance to see his son Jordi in action here in the Charity Shield. Batty. Jumala. Ball when you've got Shearer and Ferdinand in the centre to try and get it in quickly, they would appreciate that. Handy turn from Giggs. To execution, the Sony has got a problem. He's in danger of colliding with the uh, Canton Arm, maybe bringing him down. He's scampered back now. Not falling behind Newcastle that Canton Arm has looked for so often today. Ginola to go a bit further forward to try and go and help get the ball as Shearer is doing himself. He's not happy. Well, there are not many players work as hard as Alan Shearer for the team. Yeah, I think we're just making that little point to Gary Ginola. Ginola who was unsettled in the summer, interest from Barcelona. on both benches. Faustino Aspria, despite next Saturday's suspension from the match against Everton. So he's going to get feel of the Wembley turf that he has when he played here for Colombia against England. And that looks like Jordi Krag. Batty. Still feel if Newcastle could get a goal, the uh, contest will be reignited here. Cantona and Buck, the Manchester United scorers in the first half, which was theirs by a street. Well, they didn't lose the ball, Martin, because Philippe Valdez, just on the edge of the box here, had gone forward. He took a chance. And again, a less than charitable exchange. Oh. Well, Cantona, who kept out of things so much when he came back last season, it was between Aspria and Gary Neville. Paul Durkin thought uh, that Albert and Gary Neville, rather, Paul Durkin thought that Albert had been fouled. Manchester United didn't think so. And Cantona. Whether he's taking his role as captain to particular heart. But that's taken some of the gloss off Manchester United's afternoon. That was stupid. That was stupid. I think Philippe Albert did overreact, but nonetheless, Martin Eric should know better than to raise your hands to everybody anybody. There was certainly a real danger. Certainly with the referee it was on show that that card could have been red. Hug between Cantona and Albert, a wasted free kick from Newcastle. But remember, Cantona one yellow card in his comeback last season between the 1st of October and the triumphant end here in the FA Cup final. But the signs of the Cantona of old. Yeah, he took a real chance there. I mean, that is stupid. I know he's obviously, he's a man who reacts when he feels his teammates of him have been wrong. But that was an overreaction in my opinion. 
And that could has come on. And for Beardsley. So amidst all this, on comes Jordi Cruyff. He had uh, his Christian name, his Spanish name on his shirt during Euro 96, but he now has his father's name, his father's number, and the great Johan is here to watch the last quarter of this game with particular interest. thought this game would have an edge mark and I think that's uh, proving to be the case I just think the referee's got to just take a little bit of stern control right at this present moment in time one or two niggling things going on nothing serious but just niggling Shearer has earned Newcastle a free kick yard or two Ginola is lining it up Shearer not involved this time Ginola takes it and no concern for Manchester United has gone a bit steamy and so has the match ah that's great nothing like a good contest to get the beginning of the season up more than that well the result doesn't exactly settle old scores or give uh, an extra push to the lead games that lie ahead and Kevin Keegan was looking for a win as he said to kick start the Premiership campaign a uh, little more content that Newcastle have done in terms of forcing Manchester United back to defend more in the second half and now there's a trick or two maybe to come from Aspria he's all the drive of Batty cross from Watson Neville helps it on his way. Well, the corner flag's gone flying, but the ball stayed in play. Ginola. Well, it was a thoughtful ball. Curled over the outside of the foot towards Steve Watson. Good ball. Well, the problem Watson at full stretch. Difficult to control a ball when you're stretching like Steve Watson. But it is a delicate little ball and sensible thinking about it all the time, Ginola. He's playing it into an area, playing it into an area where he thinks there's danger. And there was. Just couldn't wrap his foot round it and pull it back. Ginola, very quiet for long periods. Starting to become a growing force in the game. At the time when the new sang froid of Eric Cantona has slipped. pulling out of any tackles oh this is a contest make no mistake about that Phil Neville Alice they're made to hurry by Aspria Cantona Beckham running to the right digs through the middle Cantona has got also right there as well still Cantona hit Peacock in the end he couldn't quite find the right option that time Aspria and Keane's already been booked he's got to be careful still Aspria Peacock and Pallister who's seen those coming for the majority of the game 
Had to play superbly once more. Manchester United. By no means the team in charge that they were in the first 45 minutes. Lee. But also the team that doesn't have to go chasing it. And I think that's helped them. They've just set the stall out. The back four have been really tight and close together. They've impressed me today. The four at the back, whether it's been Irwin or whether it's been Gary Neville as it is now, Martin. But they've defended really well as a unit. Whereas I don't think Newcastle's back four have defended that well. But perhaps the protection in front hasn't been what it might have been. Albert. Shearer. Albert. Pallister undoubtedly played the ball as he came across. Well, that's the beauty of having defenders who play close together, Mark. And people are running through you like that. I think if, if Newcastle defending that, then there would be big gaps for people to run in between centre-backs. But with Pallister and May, there wasn't an awfully big gap, and Pallister was able to get back. And a great tackle by Schmeichel as well. <laughs> he certainly played the ball. Albert. He turned onto his weaker side. There might be a break on for Manchester United here. Cry for Cantona. Out comes Cernicek. Well, we're asking you to pick the man of this particular contest for the charity shield. Phone now on this number, 0891-111101. Presentation will be made according to your votes. Still Manchester United's match. What? Sure, they're trying to curve that run to stay on side. Yeah, it goes in early. It's a run he makes so often in the colours of Blackburn Rovers, but the ball was usually delivered a little earlier. And I think that's a little bit of getting to know you from back to front scampering down the right Nick back by Aspria in for Ferdinand to fight for and he'll certainly do that Schmeichel will probably contact while the goalkeeper was in the air it is against the laws of the game oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised if the man alongside me takes Les <laughs> Ferdinand's part in this particular debate I don't know I think it's I was going to say catching practice but he certainly catches a goalkeeper. Well, that doesn't do any, either any harm, either Les Ferdinand or Peter Schmeichel. He'll be expecting when he's facing Ferdinand and Shearer and crosses are coming in to be some contact there. But you can see how Newcastle have pushed the second half, Mark. They've asked a lot more questions. And the thing I said like, a little bit earlier, I think Manchester United have defended much better than Newcastle have done when they've been under pressure. Paul Durkin took a while to spot the flag, which did go up straight away. Schmeichel didn't take any chances. But this is something they'll certainly look for. You can see they get that one absolutely right. But they won't be shy in doing that, I don't think, Newcastle this season. Playing it early up to one in front two to knock on for the other. Because both are willing runners in behind. 15 minutes to go. Two goals for Newcastle would take it to a penalty shootout. No extra time. It's the regulations governing the Littlewoods FA Charity Shield. Aspria. That's the way for the corner. He's looked great, Mark, since he's come on. The short spell he's been on for his female's career. Perhaps he'll need to get a point to prove. 
he plays and Sheriff and Ferdinand play, he doesn't sign. Ginola. Away by Cantona. Back for Ginola again. Flipped. Off a body on the way through, which didn't make it any easier for Schmeichel. Good strike. And certainly the deflection just in front of him there would have been the thing that might have embarrassed him, but like all good goalkeepers, kept his eye firmly on it. Knocks it down, the rest sees it. Barcelona, Rudy Kreif, but of course when his father was sacked in somewhat acrimonious circumstances. It seemed very likely that the son would uh, part company with the club as well. Ginola. Yes, has gone down the left. Ginola surveying the scene. Infield. And now looking back to involve John Beresford. Could he take it away from Ferdinand? I think he'd every right to go for it, Martin. I don't think that's a problem because I think this again is another decent chance. You can see it's a free header. What is he? Again, no more than 10 yards out. I think that'll be the thing that's disappointing. Alan Shearer had a half chance first half. Philippe Albert second half, and now Fristina has three, three free headers, none of which have hit the target. And Ginola goes off. And Keith Gillespie, who was a substitute for Manchester United in the Charity Shield two years ago, didn't get on then. Comes on to great acclaim from the Toon Army for the 12 minutes that remain. He had a rather bitty season last season, largely because of an injury sustained playing against Manchester United over the Christmas period when he was caught rather heavily by Phil Neville. And the two aren't too far away from each other at the moment. And maybe Phil Neville's not close enough to Gillespie. That's his first task to try and fashion across. Came to that. Kane spotted the run of Cryf, but decided uh, not to play the pass. Poborski. has put his flag up. Well, Giggs was and Beckham was. See David Beckham's run takes him ahead of the play. And she's as flicked at your angle. He certainly looks offside, but Beckham walked two or three yards ahead of him. And she'd have to say in an active position then. Sure. with Ferdinand going to the near post Shearer coming in behind him now it needs a good cross here Shearer trying to steer it back Gillespie Watson he's missed very little Gary Pallister possibly a candidate for your vote for man of the match today Michael was going to chest that down. Wouldn't be beyond his sense of arrogance. <laughs> Ten minutes to go, cast your votes, or certainly think about who you might nominate, and then phone 0891 111101. Oh. And uh, Beresford looked back with great anxiety, and so, of course, too did Cernicek who's possibly got a touch of the eccentrics about his goalkeeping. Been involved in one or two strange moments since he's come into the English game. And that was another one, but it didn't cost Newcastle United there. Peacock. He's 
Freer. Peacock charging on but had no hope of collecting that. Oh, it was close. I think he may have got back had it been on target anyway. Oops, keep your eye on that ball, Pavel. Come on, you'll have to work when you control me. Well, it's an all too familiar victory chant for Manchester United at Wembley. Giggs. Right. So many tests for the commentators in terms of pronunciation for the forthcoming season. All the foreigners coming in. Aspria, Ferdinand. And the muscle his way through. When I tell you that uh, you can say cry for Cruyff, you can say Jordi or Jordi. Take your pick. I'll think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> the boy 14, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the boy with a famous father. We won't thank you for that, will really. <laughs> no. But it's true. And he's got to live with it, and he's uh, done well enough in his career to this point. There will be another Johan Cruyff, and uh, no one knows that better than his son. Cantona! Well, he got there. He got free of Watson. And I think it was only the fact that he didn't get it down and not so much to do with the challenger Watson but he hasn't tested the goalkeeper again Watson gets sucked in a little bit free header unchallenged you could see the disappointment in Cantona it was his ability he would have felt he could have just have knocked out to the far corner for Beresford and it slewed away off David May for a corner but it did the job I have to say Mark in the 10 13 minutes that Asprey has been on if Kevin is looking for someone to play that free role and the, the players have been known Beersley, Ginelan Asprey Asprey has been the one for me that's impressed the most and even in short spell and Schmeichel's Borski hairs away but he's uh, well watched on that occasion by Batty and Schmeichel thought better of the throw now Batty has got a problem right Giggs three forward for Manchester United Giggs comes in on his good side Jordi Christ oh, it's gone across Sernicek and Pawlowski, the two newcomers, so close to combining there. The way perhaps the Newcastle followers were hoping that Ferdinand and Shearer would have done on a regular basis today. Here is Alan Shearer. Batty. That's the Manchester United's concentration, a test of. Newcastle's determination. Batty, it's a very deep ball. Kept in by Keith Gillespie. Diggs, not away yet. Harbour would prefer to have a shot with the left foot, not the right. And Spreer. Look how tight they all are, Martin. You see that Manchester United defence, they were quite prepared to quite happy to let it go wide but they really packed their 18 yard box with red shots well if you've enjoyed Manchester United today highlights on Tuesday night on Sky Sports of their match against Inter and Paul Ince no flag Beckham 3-0 Well, who else but Cantona Mark, would you expect to orchestrate it? They did two, three, four little passes in the midfield. Perhaps everyone's getting attracted to the ball. Look at the run of Beckham. It's perfectly timed. And the finish, well, goalkeeper made his mind up. And the young lad, he has a quick look here. Sees him coming, he thinks, well, I'll have my Wembley goal. Thank you very much. 
And it's capped a great display from him. And the captain. What a part he's played today, Cantona. So for all Newcastle's improvement in the second half, their better share of possession. They've gone further adrift in the final minutes. Less than four minutes to go. And it flew across, hit Steve Watson. Well, we mustn't, as we pointed out on a number of occasions today, lose sight of the timing of this fixture. This is mid-August. The honours are handed out much, much later on in the campaign. But Manchester United have made a statement today. We start our Premiership coverage at the Dell on Sunday. And Liverpool play Arsenal in front of the Sky Sport cameras on Monday night. Well, what's happening today, Mark, is anyone who's interested in wrestling this title from Manchester United has been, showing to, has been showing today what you're going to have to do, what you're going to have to emulate and beat to win it. It's Kane. Well, well, well. This is getting very, very embarrassing for Kevin Keegan and company. Well, that's sloppy. I know the 3-0 down, but the way Roy Keane was able just to stand outside the area, no one near him, look at that, look at him. And they roll it to him, and it seemed to go through Sunderchek. I have to say the goalkeeper should save that in my book. That's straight down his throat, he gets good view of it. It does move a little bit, but the goalkeeper should be able to do enough to push that over. But I would be more alarmed at this. How much time, how much space Keane was given to drive it at goal? Well, the trumpeting from St James's Park has been silenced today by Manchester United at Wembley. And after the two Premiership defeats, which meant so much last season in which Newcastle couldn't muster a goal they haven't been able to really threaten and open up Manchester United on a consistent basis and although it was more of a match for half an hour in the second half it's a scoreline that will reverberate around the Premiership and further afield as well I normally don't put too much stock in a charity shield result, Mark, but it's not the result. I think it's the manner of the, of the win or the defeat, whatever way you want to look at it. They've been absolutely awesome, Manchester United. Paborski. He must be, uh, along with Christ, absolutely thrilled to be a part of this. Cantona. Nicky Butt scored in a truly emphatic first half for Manchester United. And then when Newcastle, we thought we're getting out ahead of steam. David Beckham and Roy Keane have really rubbed it in. Now, this has been the best contested charity shield I've seen for, for many a year. Not scoreline, but the way both, sets, both teams have been at it. They've wanted to win it, there isn't a doubt about this. This hasn't been a training session, Mark. This has been a fiercely contested competitive football match. And Manchester United have won that football match 4-0. What does that tell us about the season ahead? What does it tell the rest of the Premiership about the season ahead? And I just feel there might be some t-shirts being printed with this scoreline on it and it's not finished yet. It's Giggs and Cantona's waiting in the centre. Sony check has to deal with a shot from Giggs and he beats it out. In stoppage time, Newcastle were left chasing and hoping and relying on the goalkeeper again. 
Bobowski totally unmarked. Keane, another crack and nearly another goal. Well, that was a more difficult save than the one he let in, Sonicek. But this what is this going to do to Newcastle's morale? Well, that's a question that needs to be answered in the next seven days, and that's the job Kevin's got to work on. We had talked all before match. This is the top two in the country, one and two. And I know it's Charity Shield. We've said it time and time again. And league champions, championships aren't won today. Neither are FA Cups, which is what Kevin Keegan wants to be contesting. But he's got to pick up his players and dust them down. Right. Still some uh, Terrier-like defending from Batic. Well, it was said, wasn't it, when Shearer was signed in some quarters to they need another striker. What about uh, getting things right at the back? The defensive record was pretty good last season when you actually look at it. They have defended very poorly today. And maybe that's not being fair on Manchester United, who have played at times in a breathtaking fashion. Shearer! Well, he's not had a sniff all day, he's had to wait till the 93rd minute. But it's first, and it's not what you would call a golden chance. It's a volley, it's a difficult one. Just cuts across it. Never troubling the goal. But there'll be more fruitful times ahead for that man in a black and white shirt. Of that, I'm absolutely convinced. Three Manchester United goals from midfield players. Does that tell you something? Yeah, they want to score goals, Mark. And they've got young legs in there that can run and run and run. Four overall, the charity shield goes to the double winners. Eric Cantona started it off. Quite glorious first half for Manchester United, although Cantona's halo did slip in one flashpoint in the second half. Nicky Buck got the second and then went off with concussion. His great pal David Beckham, after some Newcastle pressure, ran free as Cantona caught Newcastle square for the third and there was still time for a rasper from Roy Keane well three premiership points have been scored here by Manchester United over last season's closest challenges and today the world record signing on the wrong end of the scoreline and how Of course, the sheer effect on Newcastle can only be properly assessed at the season's end. So Newcastle comes second to Manchester United again today, and by a very big margin. It's not exactly the end of their world, but they hope that it's not a bad omen for the start of their season. Certainly, there'll be some bruised egos amongst those players going up. Led, as it's turned out, by Philippe Albert, not Peter Beardsley, who was captain at the start. Sir John Hall, sportingly, and uh, he can't feel like doing it, but he joins in the applause. Well, they just want to get up now, Mark, and get the, get the losers plaques, medals, whatever, and get back and get concentrated on next week. It's as simple as that. That's all losers and charities you want to do. Well, when we look back at the end of this season, there might be a different perspective on it. I think that's fair. But those uh, heads are downcast as they come down the steps. But not those belonging to players of Manchester United. Manchester United are still setting the standards in the territory of trophy winning. The Littlewoods FA Charity Shield is on display at Old Trafford for the next year if they can find room for it. most emphatic exhibition from Manchester United they put down their marker well Alan Shearer makes an early exit 
face it. There's plenty of time to come for him to have his say in the black and white stripes. And you do feel today that these players deserve a lap of honour. It's been that kind of display. First half, I mean, we're losing, but in the early half halftime, I thought it just took a wee bit of momentum away from us. But give credit to Newcastle, they came fighting back a bit in the second half and made it a contest. I felt towards the middle of the second half, it was starting to get a, gri a, gri a grip again. And when I decided to put Croy on wide left and Ryan Giggs in the centre midfield, I think that was it sewed up for us then. And you're happy with the way the new boys fitted in? Yes, I think they showed enough to to tell our own supporters we've got class yeah. and that's important and I think we've got really good quality good value for money Did you ever get fed up with this winning at Wembley? No, absolutely not Very, very disappointing I mean we looked like a team that had never played together before we looked like a team that really didn't have one player who said come on I'll sort this out I'll lead you out of this because we weren't playing well we weren't passing the ball well um, and the passion for me in the first half, the crowd, our supporters had all the passion and the players didn't have enough of it. And um, well, you saw what happened. I mean, Man United came out, they do what they do very well. And uh, I don't think 4 0 really flattered them. Uh, second half, we were better. But to be honest with you, we had to be. Um, we were so poor first half, it was, it, it was depressing to watch. You know, and, and Wembley can be a great place if you're playing well, but when things are happening, likes of which were happening first half. You just want to get in, and then the second half, when the fourth went in, uh, if the referee had blown up, then with five minutes to go, whatever it was, I'd have been delighted. I mean, it was just a bad day. I thought four goals were maybe two goals too many, yeah. but I mean that's the way it goes. Uh, they were putting pressure on us. They played extremely well in the second half, uh, and well, you know, when a team is putting pressure, they are bound to concede some contra attacks, yeah. and uh, so it was. And we were very fortunate to score them. Is that the real Newcastle? Will they still be the team to watch next season? I think so, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously, Kevin Keegan's got some selection problems, positive selection problems. Uh, with Sherry coming a week ago, uh, he hasn't really been able to try out uh, which system, which formation is, is his best. And he was obviously trying during the game uh, to see how it worked. Uh, I don't think he can put anything into four now. I think, you know, as a, as a team, we just didn't, didn't play at all. We didn't get our passing together, I think. You know, they, they harried us and, and hassled us and, you know, I think in the end they deserved their victory. What about the goal? Tell me about the, the goal that you scored. Uh, what do you remember? Very nice ball, very nice, very good vision from David Beckham, giving me the ball on the right and I control it and uh, I tried to find the space. Are you very happy with the new players in the team? Yes, we are very happy. Yeah, we got a big squad with a lot, lot of great players and uh, that's why we, we can win a lot of things again this season. Wembley is a very lucky pitch for you. Uh, a lot of pitch. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Love and very it's lucky. very nice. It's great atmosphere and a very nice pitch, big pitch. And uh, it's always nice to be there. And a very nice start to the season for Man United. Uh, yeah, it's important. Manchester United have to win everything. So, charity shield is an important one. What about Newcastle? How disappointing were they today? Do you think we saw the real Newcastle today? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. They tried their best, but uh, no, it's a very good, it's a very good team. Uh, the championship will be very difficult to win this season. A lot of teams, not just Newcastle and Manchester United, a lot of teams speak about us, but uh, this season this will be very hard. A lot of teams can win it. Well, certainly don't panic. I mean, we're, we're not panicking. I mean, it's one game. 
credit to Man United, they played very well, fully deserved to win by four goals probably. But uh, you know, we we're sort of building up to it, you know. I mean next Saturday, as the boss said before the game, is the most important thing. You know, it might not have seemed like it today, but uh, that is the most important and uh, hopefully if we start with three points again, Everton that'll get our confidence back. Nice for your confidence, nice to play with Shearer and Ferdinand in front of you. Yeah, that was nice for me. I mean, I didn't really expect to play, so that was a bonus. And uh, you know, although it didn't go too well, uh, they are two top class strikers. <laughs> So it's, it's not a case of being the best or how well he played. The, the most important thing is that he's sad because we've lost an important game. It was a final and he's always sad when that happens. I think Tino was the only one when he came on and to a lesser extent Keith Gillespie uh, who really, you think, well, he looked like he really wanted to do something out there. The others just struggled today. One of those days. Bad day at the office. You have them sometimes. Well, the match may have ended in a downpour, but it wasn't.